So uh, we have a patient with um, uh, right lower extremity claudications. Um, he's a 63-year-old male. Uh, his status post uh, AVAR uh, for uh, symptomatic aortic thrombus in April 2011. Uh, also had um, claudication of the left lower extremity and had uh, left SFA and popliteal angioplasty. This was in June 2012 with uh, basically complete resolution of his uh, claudications. Uh, he presented um, for um, claudications of the right lower extremity. His symptoms started six months ago, uh, slowly progressed. Um, now he uh, can walk only half a block uh, before he uh, develops his symptoms. He has no rest pain, he has no ulcers. Um, history of um, ACV, HIVP. He uh, also had bladder, bladder cancer and uh, his status post um, cystectomy with ileal uh, conduit. Um, he, the CT angio, can you click the angio, please? Yeah. Um, you can uh, see the endograft um, and then um, right. Uh, SFA uh, disease on the MIP on the right side, uh, diffuse disease with uh, areas of uh, severe stenosis, um, extends down to the popliteal, uh, popliteal artery. So a uh, 63-year-old male, progressive right lower extremity claudications, um, evidence of significant SFA disease, popliteal also um, on PVR and CTA. Um, the options were uh, to go anti-grade uh, common femoral artery axis because of his uh, endograft and because of also the, the ileal conduit or uh, go transradial um, axis uh, and uh, plasty. So basically what we did is we got uh, right or left radial axis. We purposely went a little, uh, a little high uh, to make sure we get enough length uh, to do everything. Um, so then we basically were able to easily get down the arch. Um, so this is us. We basically doubled over the Benson to make sure we stayed within the endograft. We don't want to go behind it because that could be somewhat disastrous. Um, so we ended up actually going down. This is sort of our, our runoff here. So this is a 125 VER. Um, we had about 10, 15 centimeters out the, the back of the, the sheath here. So you can see there's significant multifocal um, sort of mid uh, SFA disease. Um, we're going to run off the, the rest of them here. So again, sort of mid to proximal SFA disease. Uh, roughly, we sort of guesstimated uh, about 12 centimeters of disease here. Popliteal looks okay. Uh, um, his tibials aren't so great, but ultimately, because this guy's just a claudicant, we're not going to sort of deal with this. Um, we just obviously wanted to do this for documentation purposes. Um, I'll show you. It gets, we get a, eventually get a good run here of the, the tibial vessels here. You can see here. There's the PT going down, perineal comes back via collaterals. So basically, what we did is we put an exchange length Benson down. Um, we're going to end up using a, a 180, 180 centimeter length uh, Pacific Plus balloon from Medtronic. Uh, what this allows us to do, obviously, is because it's a good length. Um, the, the biggest issue is obviously it's, it's 180 centimeters over the wire. Um, so we're using, actually, it's a GI fluoro wire, uh, endoscopy wire, but it's a 180, uh, sorry, 480 centimeter uh, Boston Scientific um, 018 wire called, an, I think it's called Navigold. Navigold. Yeah, Navigold wire. We were able to cross uh, here. So let's see if I can show you that part. So basically, this is where we are right now. Um, as you can see there, we've sort of positioned our balloon. That's about 12 centimeters. Um, probably can go in just a little bit further. Um, and then we're going to start ballooning. We, so the issue we're going to really run into with this guy is he's a pretty tall guy. We said he's about 5'10", 5'11", somewhere on there. Um, is that you know, with this 180 centimeters, if we do have to bail out stent, this is probably about the far as we can go with the, with the stents at this point. They, they do go through, they will fit through a six French guide, um, which we've sort of parked in the uh, distal external iliac artery here. So um, we're, gonna, we're actually already, already set up to uh, balloon. We're just going to go push this a little bit further. So the stent may not reach down there. Yeah, that's. We have to, we have to do uh, at a great stick. Yeah, okay, so we're going to go gently here. So what size balloon do you guys have? In so there? right now. This is four. Yeah. Because we are scared. Uh, because it's diffuse multifocal disease, we don't have a very good bailout uh, technique from above, so we want to do a four first and see, uh, and then go for a five, most likely. Yeah. So we, we know we've left the balloon up here for, like, I'll call it the IR minute. Um, so we're going to start to sort of wind this down. For this guy, in my, it's my bias, but a thyrectomy, I think it's poor choice, just because he has tibial disease significant. and. Yeah. Uh, we might just trust down there, and as we said, coming from above, we don't have now many tools to, to bail out. Yeah. To bail out. I, I guess a, a corollary to that question is, you know, and, and one of the reasons why we wanted to show this type of case today was to show where we are right now, what types of cases that we think we can do successfully, and then where we want to go. And 
sort of moving fur further, I think where we want to go is be able to use DCB bailout yeah. stents that are not just 150, but they can get all the way down to the tibial vessels. We're going to actually, go, with the four actually looked a pretty, a, a lot more undersized than we thought it was going to be, so we're just going to go with the five. Yeah. Um, you know, again, like I said, we're sort of being a little bit more cautious because we're, we're not totally sure uh, in terms of our bailouts here. Well, let's talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so <laughs> let's say a rupture or a, uh, a dissection, which requires a stent below where the stent could reach, something like that. What would you do? So I, I, I personally, for me, I, I, that's why for now, I choose cases where the, this, the proximal SFA is clean, so I can always go uh, under grade. Yeah. So I'm very, uh, I'll let Rahul speak after yeah. us, but I'm very uh, shy when the disease is all the way up to the common because it's very difficult then to deploy an a, a undergrade technique. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I think proximal, very proximal SFA, if, especially if it's diffuse, is going to be difficult because yeah, if, yeah, if, you, if you run into to issues, you know, trying to land a stent from the top uh, very close into the common femoral or if you have to go anti-grade, it's going to be almost impossible. Um, the other thing is obviously it's the length, right? We have to make sure, if I'm, I'm, I have to be very sure I'm not going to end up subintimal and not need to, to use a re-entry device to get back in. Um, I have to make sure I'm not going to embolize distally because if we do, we're going to end up in a big problem because um, I don't have any really any bailouts. Can you hold the sheet? Rahul, can we see the wrist and so just so we can see what you have working in the wrist right now? Yeah, it's a little covered up, but you can see we have a 5.6 slender and a 6.1.10 uh, MP guide. Okay. Uh, which is from Medtronic. We actually put a cook uh, check flow valve on here. Is there a reason that you selected a guide catheter and not a, a guide sheath? Um, so, you know, his uh, radial artery wasn't that big, and I'm a little worried about getting spasm yeah. around the sheath. So, you know, we figured out actually pretty quickly that the stent and the balloon will go through the guide, so we didn't think we needed the sheath yeah. that down that far. Um, all right, so uh, we decided that, um, you know, we had all these residual stenoses. We took it to five. We didn't really want to push it to six for angioplasty. Um, so we actually then took the, the stent down. So this is the stent coming down uh, here. So we got it in position with the roadmap. Um, it actually, it does fit through the six French guide. Um, it did reach. We didn't have to take it out. Didn't have to take off the, um, the check flow valve or anything. Uh, we could probably go maybe another three to four centimeters down from here, but that's about the extent of uh, the length we would get with 150. Um, we did, it, this is actually an 035 stent, but we did it over the 018 wire because when we have the balloon, we don't have to keep doing these exchanges. So here's the stent uh, being deployed. Um, and then we sort of re-ballooned uh, back up with five, which sort of took it over dilated the balloon. And then this is the run afterwards. So it looks much better. Um, at this point, you know, the next question is, you know, we, we have this stuff in the popliteal um, distally here. It's kind of ratty, so I think we're going to take that to four and just sort of tap it down a little bit and, and go from there. I don't know what, if you guys have any other different thoughts about what to do down there. So actually, you know, his ABIs at rest, they don't really correlate to the degree of his disease, but I'm just going to do a duplex. I will survey him uh, in a month, and then every three months, the first year, and then every six months, uh, I will duplex his uh, stents, and I will follow his ABIs. Okay. He looks like uh, at some point he's going to develop significant tibial disease. So for that, for me to treat mm -hmm. that, I'll have to wait to have okay. CLI. So we're not really big ACT checkers, but so we gave 3,000 at the beginning. We gave another 3,000 once we had the catheter, uh, the diagnostic catheter, and we did our runs. Uh, once we put the guide down, we put another 3,000 heparin. We just gave him sort of another 1,000 heparin. You know, our goal in our mind is between 200, 250. Uh, a little bit higher for me. Oh, a little bit higher for you. Yeah, so <laughs> a little bit higher, so anywhere, but not over 300. Thanks, guys. That was yeah, really a great case. All right. Um, and thanks, everybody in the lab. Yeah, thanks. Go ahead. thanks, everybody.